I will try to remember how it goes. I'm going to try to remember how it goes in front of you. So you, just, you get to watch me go through this fun process, and then I'll uh, run it down phrase by phrase. <laughs> version of it. So I'll do, we'll go one phrase at a time. We'll kind of repeat these phrases a bit. I'll alternate between saying the notes and playing them as we've been going. So the first phrase is G, B, G, D, G, B, C natural, and
Okay, so our first two phrases together are. How much again? Together. Ah. after that is that with the phrase that comes before it, which is the same as the first phrase, sounds like this. And a little brain bug there, I'll try that again. And uh, again and everything we have so far. Sounds like this. And uh to the next part of the tune. We're still in the A section. We've got some repeated material here.
little gift from the tune. That's the exact same as the first two phrases we learned. I'll play one more time. <laughs> And we have a, ourselves a little turnaround phrase here. This will be the, at the last phrase of this A section. It goes like this. So that I'll break that in half. So it's G, B, 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 D, B, B, B. I'm doing a long roll on those. G, B, long roll, D, B, long roll. Okay. Again, that's about ready. Um. Okay. And then the last little bit. Which we already know. And that's G, B, A, B, G, E, D, and A. Uh. Together, G, B, long roll. We play those. Ready, and. Ready, again. Let me just recap the whole A part, and then we can pause for questions and clarification before we move on to B. So the whole A part goes like this, and uh. Anybody got a trouble spot there? Questions or ready to move on? Cool. But now I, I gotta play for just a second and remember how this thing goes. <laughs> Just kind of lots of A rolls, or you can do a little pause there. So A, 
A B A G E G or a long roll A A A B A G E G. And uh, and uh, <laughs> one more time. <laughs> so those two together are. Next phrase. The pentatonic thing. D E G A B A G E. And a. D E G A B A G E and again. And then we're going to go. That phrase is just a, keeps rearing its head in this tune. It's a lovely little phrase. that with the phrase that came before. just before that, which would be the top of the B part, the top of the second part of the tune. Of the B part, the third phrase, 
as is often the case, same as the first. Uh, yeah, it goes up to that F, actually. That again, ready. Mm. Okay, that F, of course, is leading us to the G, which would be the... um kind of like the way we wrap up the D part. So G, F, G, E, F, G, E. And uh, again. with the same level of phrase. So those last two bits together from the G, F, G, E, F, G, E, that is. agree with what you know it is. Well, you play a little more rounded version than I play. I got it off of an old Patty Blacken album. Let's see. Something like that. It's oh, real cool. close. Close enough. It'll pass. Passes the Duke. It's the Duke in disguise. Um, yeah. All right. Um, great. Let's play the whole D part. What's, whole D what's part the name like, of it again? Oh, yeah. Duke, of... Duke Leinster. L E I N. Yeah. L E I N S T E R. I could probably type it in the chat. Okay. Thanks. All right, so let's do the B part. Maybe a little slower than that.
home to for teaching it, John. My pleasure. Yeah, Thank you for indulging time. me. Helps me learn the tune a little better, or at least in the way I learned it. Um, I grabbed that just by, uh, I haven't had time to do a lot of listening to it since I just learned it recently. So I just started by grabbing it from Queen Session, volume two, from Cultus, the quick and dirty version. They pair that, they play that after Bucks of War and War. Yeah. So they do Bucks and then they wrap up whatever step that was with to the Leinster. So did anybody have trouble getting in? It looks like uh Mark is having problems with the link. Well I had trouble getting in. It took me about five minutes. I had to back all the way out. Did but you? uh he said he was gonna be late. Okay. He's trying right now, but okay. Sounds like he's struggling. I'm going to pass the facilitation torch now to someone else. Um, kind of got to step off and have the have the phone call with my dad real quick. Um, but I do want to, um, Susan. I haven't connected with you yet. Are have we met before? I don't. I don't know if we have. And are are you local from Michigan? Where are you from? I live in Saline. Oh, Close nice. enough. Cool. Ann Arbor here. Yeah, you make it into our branch. Yeah, I'm in. And I'm playing the hammered dulcimer. <laughs> so cool, Zephyr. Stop. Oh, what a dinosaur. That's people. great. No. But I can't play that fast. So I haven't. I, I haven't be able to keep up. I haven't met Susan. I Zephyr, come here, Do you do you know of so, about Silver Strings Dulcimer Society? Yes, I do. Okay. In okay. fact, I have the the form to join right here. 
Okay. They have a lot of good support tools, teaching tools, and really friendly, helpful people. I'm I'm a recovering hammer dulcimer player myself. <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen their um, I I've, I've been on their monthly jams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But I need to take more advantage of their website because I I haven't played in a while and I'm just so behind the time. So need to catch up. Um, the fast-paced world of the hammer, hammer dulcimer is whizzing by you. You got to catch it's, up, right? It's an it's an interesting thing that it, it's an instrument that was once played in Ireland, but it's not at all maintained any kind of popularity. It's weird. Well, there is a a lovely. I'll use this as a transition. There's a lovely hammer dulcimer player um, in Santa Cruz, California. She uh, leads a session at um, O'Flaherty. Is that what mm -hmm. it's called? William, you're in Healdsburg. Yes, um, I I live in San Francisco, but I'm actually in our van visiting uh, our, my mother-in-law, um, and I didn't want to. I missed this last week. John was nice enough to invite me. I saw the invite on the, the Shannon Heaton Matt Heaton session, and um, my father was from Detroit, and um, I didn't spend too much time there growing up. <clears throat> he lived mostly out here. Then my son went back to school at uh, U of M in Ann Arbor, yeah, and settled back there. And now he lives in Whitmore Lake. And we haven't been out there in a long time, but I I have roots there. And so that caught my eye that it was Detroit and kind of Ann Arbor. So thank you for having me here. I've really enjoyed the time so far. Yeah, right, thanks right. so much, William. You we posted a lovely video last week on the on the VGS Facebook page, right? Thank you. So, yeah. Well, I'm trying to work through sounded, some core common core tunes. Yeah, excellent. Have you been able to? Uh, <laughs> did you did you slip any roles in there while you were learning Duke Leinster here? Um, no, I find that at my the triplets, I suppose they're level, called triplets. Yeah, triplets at my level, it's really good to just learn kind of a bare bones of the tune, the essence of the tune, and then kind of fit in the, the triplets later or else That's nice. it works better. Yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, if you're ever doubting your, your uh, if anyone's ever doubting their um, ornamentation uh, fluency and, and how, you know, how much they're able to dress up their tunes, you can just go listen to Michael Russell's whistle playing and there, there's, there's barely a cut or any kind of ornament in there, you know, he plays it pretty stripped down and it's just brilliant stuff. So you don't actually need ornaments to, to really bring the spirit of the music alive. So, um, yeah, I, Matt Heaton I, left a comment on the video I posted. I think he said, I said, I slipped in one triplet there and he said, that's all you need. Just like a nice hat. You only need to wear one hat at a time. Just one hat. <laughs> oh, God bless Matt ever humble and helping us all stay humble, keeping our ambitions at bay. Yeah. Yeah. That's he a good sounds place pretty to start. fantastic on the banjo too. If you yeah. can slip but one I'm going to, I'm going to step away. Okay. Thanks, John. I, I'll probably join again, but if I don't, it's really, really great to be with you all. And thanks for, um, you know, indulging me while I played flute in front of you. <laughs> Thanks for teaching Thank you, a lot of the, the tunes from the cultist books, John. I appreciate that. And My Jackie, pleasure. I've just gotten so much mileage out of them that I thought, you know, we're a cultist branch. Everybody knows them. We got to start, you know, it's good common core. Go ahead, Eric. I was going to say, um, could you share that link to the session out in California again? That was, that was a lot of fun last week. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, down in San Diego. Yeah. Um, yeah, down in San Diego. Um, yeah, I'll share the link to that. Michael Eskin, I'll pull that up. Because he's got a Zoom session that happens starts at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, and that's a really nice one. They do Celtic karaoke. So someone, they like pipe in speakers um, somehow. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. But uh, yeah. they play a longer recording, too. It's like one of the things they do. So that's a different vibe. They've been doing it for a long time. Really fun session. So, yeah, I'll pop that uh, link in the chat. Nice to see you all. Great. Thanks, John.
I guess we can start uh, going around. Um, let everybody take turns. Uh, let's see. Um, Joe, you want to get something you want to share with us? Sure. Um, trying to think. You guys know, I know that, I know some of you know at the Glen of Aherlow. Um, I and then maybe in I and then the Glen of Arello and then uh, Miss Monahan's. If that's okay.
film. Hey, that was great. Very nice. Yeah, that was great. Anybody else uh, got something they want to play? Hey, Joe. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I've never heard it played uh, with C naturals instead of C sharps. Did you, is that how you learned it? Um, nope. I didn't realize I was playing C naturals. Maybe it was in between. It might have been. Yeah. Did it sound out? Well, I was playing, you know, I'm fretted, so I got to choose one or the other. And gotcha. These, so I'm playing C sharps, but it sounded like you were either playing C naturals or maybe you were splitting the difference like some of those old timers did. You know, I mean, there is some of it's kind of blunted, but I don't, it seems like the C's are all like passing notes. I don't know if there's any melody notes. Yeah, that are they're actually all passing C notes. Yeah. yeah, so if I'm, I get sloppy, if I'm just doing a triplet or something like that, it's like, it's just rhythmic to me. But if it's, uh, I just I've actually, if you got it from one of those, you know, some of those old guys would do stuff like that, which makes no sense to the my modern ear. But some of, you know, people are like great people like um, Dennis Murphy or Patty Canny would sometimes play a tune with a, a note that to me doesn't seem like it's in the scale, you know, but it's just something, you know, hard to understand from. 2022 in, in Detroit, you know, I think I just have bad intonation. <laughs> I think you should have said, yes, you were, uh, you were playing in an old authentic style. Yes, exactly. Everything I've, I learned off of old uh, Dennis Leary recordings, you know, <laughs> Chris stuff. And, you know, with that kind of, you know, it's, it's not D it's not C sharp. It's not C natural. It's C supernatural. Yeah. Well, there is a lot of that. You were channeling Bobby Casey. Right. I mean, I I have slowed down and listened to a lot of like even Michael Coleman, who was a great technician, but he was uh, his F sharps are not always F sharp. I mean, they're like somewhere between F and F sharp, and um, and his C's are kind of all over the place too. But I think it's for a re you know, it's not sloppiness. It's like a uh, I don't know just where he wants to kind of bend it, make it, make it cry a little bit. I mean, I try to do that, but yeah, I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, you're right. There must, there must have been some reason that maybe is lost, to, lost to time or something, you know? Well, sometimes, I mean, you know, if you're, not comparing your you're playing and there aren't a lot of people around you that have like a piano or an accordion you just get used to whatever you hear and that sounds right well and also i mean when you're playing here on zoom it's like i can't hear any of you guys so i don't have any reference notes if i start to on a fretless fiddle start drifting a little north on this thing it's sort of like you know you're sort of like ah. Eh. Sounds a little wild. I'm not exactly sure why. I'll just keep going. Yeah. You know? I mean, if it sounded, sometimes it does. I'll I'll play stuff and play it back, and you know, I'm appalled at how my intonation. I need to work on it. I mean, no no two ways about that. But well, everything else seems perfectly in tune. So maybe you're doing that in between C or something. Yeah, yeah. it was all that listening to Patty yeah. Canny and stuff. It was yeah. all that. Yeah, you know, it just kind of soaked in, you know. And yeah, but I mean, some of those, I mean, like Michael Coleman, Patty Canny, Bobby Casey, those guys aren't hacks. Right, right. You know, so it must have been either intentional or it was just part of some ancient style that we just maybe, at least that I don't understand. Or they were recorded when they were old and they weren't yeah. quite as uh, yeah, on maybe. spot. There was yeah. some of that. But I think I think you're right, Fran, for some of that stuff. But even when you hear younger ones and, you know, people in their prime, they're they're doing weird things that like to our ears with, you know, feels a little off. Yeah. I mean, when I was starting to learn when I was starting to learn fiddle and stuff like that, I mean, I went for a couple of years where I did nothing but listen to Patty Canny, Bobby Casey. I mean, like, that's all I listened to. You know, unless it was for work, I had to do a music track or something like that. Then I would, you know what I mean? If I wasn't 
um, you know, if it wasn't for work, that's all I did was really just listen um, to that stuff just to try to get it to where that's the way I thought about the music, you know, like, I remember somebody telling me, like, if you want to sound like Miles Davis, you got to listen to Miles Davis, you know, like, and I was like, oh, that makes sense, you know, just really immerse yourself in a sound. And so I kind of took that approach for Irish music, just trying to, you know, being a middle class suburban kid in, in America that grew up listening to Foreigner, you know. <laughs> right. Well, they those guys had a lot more influence from people that had their influences from the time when there was no recording. Right. That being influenced by recordings that everybody's focused on being perfection, perfect. And it wasn't like that in the old days. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, they, they had no way of really recording themselves at all. You know, it's sort of like Michael Coleman was an early adopter of technology. I mean, like, basically, he was like, get me in a studio, I'm going to record stuff and uh, make some money. Well, yeah. the fact that he was in New York had a lot to do with it, too. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Anybody got something they want to play? I, um, I don't know if Elizabeth is... Design. You could play something if you want. Who are you talking to? Elizabeth? Oh, I'm here, but I'm just listening. How are you? Okay. I'm still remembering how to play this thing, so <laughs> it'll be a while. That's all right. Well, I've got a couple I'm going to, I could try to play. Okay. Uh, the Fairy Reel, I Have No Money, and maybe the Hairy Chested Frog.
Yeah, I think I did. Uh oh, never mind. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do one more. Is that the hairy chested frog, friend? Yeah, the hairy chested frog. Oh, I don't know that. It's By nice. Bobby Casey. Hmm. It's a great tune. It sounds really nice on flute. Bobby Casey wrote that? I'm pretty sure. Okay. I mean, that's what I, that's what I read. I believe you. Other that's than the, that. That's what I the frog know. told her. Yeah. It was a prince, actually, but... Uh, yeah, what do you know? You uh, you went into Enchanted Lady there for a little bit. Yeah. You know, the tunes are so similar sometimes. So I took a wrong turn. Ooh. John, you're going to play your pipes for us. Yes. I don't know if I'll play them for you. I mean, I could, but uh, yeah. That would be great. Yeah, we'd love to hear it. Hmm. Is that See. a fact? Maybe someone. Uh, I, I need to warm up a little bit. I gotta. Sure, sure, sure. I gotta play a few notes first. Does someone else need a set, and then uh, we can play a tune that you've been playing on the pipes, so that you can play along to yourself. Do you have one that you want somebody to lead? That's uh, a lovely sentiment. Thank you, Fran. Um, I've been working on a couple of jigs, um, working on Leach and Fancy. Um, I've been working on Gander in the Pratty Hall. Um, That's a good one. Both and um, and uh, fasten the legginer. Okay. Tim looks like he's ready to leave cross. Those. I had a set that yeah. had two of those tunes in it. Let's do it. Uh, Let's do it, Tim. The, the banks of Loch Gauna, and then um, Gander at the Pratty Hole, and Pipe in the Hob. Sorry.
was I going next? <laughs> uh, oh. You're gonna pa play fast in the leg on her. Oh, yeah. I said I I said I had a set that had two of those three tunes in it. And you didn't. Yeah, he he mentioned. Um, did he mention Gander at the Pratty Hole yeah. and Pipe in the Hob? Oh, okay. I didn't hear that one. That's what I just played was Pipe in the Hob. No, yeah, that's a nice set, Tim. Mm. Okay. Good tunes. You know what, that's, um, I was looking at something to play with Banks of Lakana and that sets on the Tully Cayley band, one of their albums. Nice set. Yeah, I forgot I knew how to play Shores of Lakana. It's a fun <laughs> tune. Yeah, it's a good tune that rarely gets played, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. We've played that in POB for some dances. Yeah. Thanks for that on it. So I think Susan Songer brought it to us. What's POB? Pittsfield Open Band. Oh. William, do you have anything you want to play? Yeah, I'll try something. Um, uh, there is a tune I learned recently called um, the Donnybrook Fair in G, and I learned it from uh, Marla Fibish out here, um, great mandolin player. And maybe I could go into Tobin's favorite after that if I don't take a wrong turn. Yeah, that'd be good. I apologize, this is my little travel banjo. It just never quite tunes up the way I want it to. So I'm just do my best.
Really nice. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. Great. Very nice. Well done. Good tunes. Yeah. Who do you like to play? Who do you play with uh, out in San Francisco? Huh. Nobody. I mean, people online. Um, I started playing. Um, I'm not a stranger to music. I've listened to Irish music all my life. And I really started playing seriously just before the pandemic. And then the pandemic was sort of gave me more impetus to just really focus on it. So I've been playing the banjo for a little over two years. And the pandemic hit, and that's been about it. There was one session um, last summer in San Francisco, an outdoor session that a friend of mine plays guitar in, and I got invited to that. Actually, I forgot about that, but that was the only time I've ever played with live people. Nice. And who's your friend, the guitar player? He's a guy named Dave DeLang. He has a, a very nice uh, little trio called Fret and Fiddle. If you want to look him up, it's a, it's him. Um, I forget the fiddle player's name, and they usually have either a, another boron player or another fiddle player, kind of a rotating spot. But uh, they've got a website or some some such thing. Good. Well, I used to get out to the Bay Area um, before the pandemic. I was out that way every month for work, um, and. I'm under the assumption and the expectation that that will resume again. You know, my kids are vaccinated and things. So perhaps when this all lightens up, we'll be able to cross paths. And Tim, you were just out in the Bay Area for a good stretch there, weren't you? was for a month. I'm blanking on what's the what's the session, the, the pub out there? Um, the Plow in the Stars. There you go. Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of sections out there. It's a good city for Irish music. I've, like I said, I've listened to it all my life because it's, it's there and it's around me. And I've known Irish musicians, um, <clears throat> and know people that play it. And so, it's a great town for good Irish music. I know Marla, um, and I've taken lessons out there and um, out here actually once, and then. Um, I do workshops with her. I'm doing one now. I was on with her last night, as a matter of fact. So, she's a great teacher, a great player. Wonderful person. I knew her okay. way back in like the 70s. That's when I first met her. Yeah. Kind of like the folk music scene when people were just learning the music and coming into it. And yeah, she's a wonderful person. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Jack Gilder, you know Jack? Um. I don't know him personally, but I've listened to his sessions and a big admirer of his playing and have some of his CDs. The, um, oh, the name of his band is, well, one of his bands, um, uh, J Jody's Heaven. That's it, yeah. Jody's Heaven is with uh, Russ, Dale Russ. Yep. Tim, I just thought really nice to have. Oh, I was just saying, uh, I saw that uh, Marla had just gotten a box of CD pressed, of press CDs, and I, something on Facebook, I think, where uh, she had, you had commented or something, so it showed up in my feed, and I was looking at it, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool, so I just ordered it, just uh, yesterday. Oh, was um, it the, uh, the Bright Hollow Fog? Yes, yes, yeah. not the, not her re most recent one, but the one right before that. Yeah, that one, the Bright Hollow Fog is is just as good as uh, Irish mandolin gets. Really good. I heard some tracks of it on her website, and it really was really nice stuff. And she does, so. you know, duets with a bunch of people, like Martin Hayes, for example. It's a bunch of hacks. Who's that? Who? Who's that? Of, yeah. <laughs> but it's really good. She does, well, there's one on there that she does with some... Um, a fretless banjo player who maybe you know him, William, I can't remember his name, but he's a fretless banjo player. He doesn't, Iris is just one of the many things he does. I can't remember his name, but anyway, it sounds really great, the duet. Cool. Um, and by the way, you just call me Bill. I got to change that. I, oh. <laughs> but anybody, you can just call me Bill. Okay. All right. Banjo Bill from San Francisco. We're so glad to have you 
um, with us tonight. It's really fun. Well, it's really nice. It's really nice. It's a, um, I've really enjoyed the tunes and a um, little bit of a connection. And I do live on a hill, too. So it's Banjo Bill from On the Hill. From the Hill. Great. <laughs> So John, are you ready Good. to wow us? <laughs> yeah, you'll be you'll be wowed in 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 some some fashion. <clears throat> yeah, I'll play um nice little slow um that real Donald Blue is the name I have for it. Somebody have a different name for this tune? I only know it as Donald Blue. <laughs> All right. Hope I don't wake my children up. There you have it, folks. Finest piping on Textile Road. Very nice. Very nice. Hey. Tim, are you going into Lady's Cup of Tea? You are. I I wasn't, but I probably would have eventually gotten there. <laughs> well, go for it. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm playing the Tempest. Play you play it, Fran. Ladies' cup of tea. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so many tunes that we haven't played for so long yeah i know that's one of them 
I'm going to say good night, guys. Thanks. Um, it's been fun. And thanks again, John. It was great. It was so great to see Shannon here. Wow, that made my day. <laughs> that was a nice come, treat. I hope she could come back. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Me too. That was great to see yes, you. you've got a nice little collection of people coming from the VGS crew. Bill, you're you're one of them. It's great to have you here. And every week we've got a few VGS folks showing up, which is just so lovely. So that's cool. Okay, see you Thanks next week. Thanks for being here, Bye. Donna. Donna. My pleasure. Bye. I'm thinking that, uh, you know, once we decide to go back in person, Bill, we typically meet uh, in person here in Ann Arbor uh, every Thursday and we switch to Zoom, you know, with Omicron. But um, it'd be nice when we go back if we could pop a video feed on and do a little Zoom session, you know, from what we're doing or some sort of <clears throat> streaming from that would be kind of nice. Right. Yeah. Well, again, one of the reasons why this session caught my eye was because we do like to visit Ann Arbor and you know someday I'd like to be back there again and <laughs> yeah well, well we'd love to have you yeah keep uh, e an email address or whatever and it'd be great to see you in person there sometime I, I want to be there in person too by the way <laughs> we're all waiting for yeah. it to come back yeah yeah and Bill when you come to Ann Arbor we can uh you have plenty of places for you to park your van if you want to stay in your van, but uh, we have considered driving it there. Yeah, we've looked at routes. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Well, the sessions are on Sunday nights at Connor O'Neill's. It's a lovely session. It's hosted by the Gavin family, Mick Gavin and his two sons, Sean and Michael. Sean Gavin's a well-known piper and flute player. He probably comes out your way relatively often with Tata. Um, and then on Thursday nights, we have our um, session in Ann Arbor. So it's in a church, so it's a slightly different vibe and it's, you know, geared towards uh, bringing along new players and learners. So you have your pick of the litter if you come spend a week in Ann Arbor. We'd love to have you here. Sounds great. Sounds wonderful. Thank you for that invitation. Very warm, welcoming uh, invitations from, from you guys. Well, that's, that's the Midwest for you. So I'm going to hop off and uh, spend a little time with my wife, Alan, before we before we go to bed. So nice spending time with you all this evening. Thank Good you, Sean. Week. Thank you. Bill, do you know uh, Piper Debbie? She lives uh, further north out in California. I her, don't. Her, she also goes by, I think her real name is uh, Nadine. Um, Nadine Tolls or, okay, yeah. She's somebody that I, I used to take lessons from her ex-husband. He taught me how to play the fiddle. No, no, I, no, I don't. Not familiar. There's a lot of people I don't know. Yeah, yeah. What, you don't know everybody in California? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. Bill, my daughter lives in LA. She works at a museum there and she just took a trip two weekends ago up to San Francisco. She caught COVID up there. Oh, yeah. Wow. wow so she's that's, at the, she's at the end of it, but she, she pretty, she knows she caught it in, in San Francisco. So yeah, well, we, the cases have actually been going down, I think. Yeah, it was like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's been, it's probably, it was a week. It was like 10 days ago. So she's getting out of isolation right now. But she was really bummed that she got it. She's been so careful. So so she's blaming San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, I could see why. Yeah. But they have a pretty high vaccination rate there and you have they to do. show proof of ID to get into bars, restaurants. They they went into events. one restaurant and um, nobody else got it in the restaurant but her. But then she gave it to her boyfriend. So wow. so. So I've been calling every day to make sure she's not taking a dive or anything, you know, but she's, she's, she's recovered well, so. Ricky, do you have a, another one you want to share with us? Did you say me? Yeah, yeah, oh. sorry. I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna just try this, see if I could get through it, okay?
Okay, sure. So I'm gonna um, try dancing eyes, see if I could do it, so. <laughs> better than one day was it <laughs> yeah it totally was so. good job that was great yeah very nice tune i'm gonna say goodbye i need to go help with dinner and <laughs> um so nice meeting you all and oh you. yeah nice meeting you bill yeah I mean, nice meet you. glad you could stop by do it again sometime i will i will have a good dinner thanks everybody thanks bill yep bye bye, -bye. And then there were five. <laughs> but I'm about tapped out for the evening. Oh, yeah. It's almost nine o'clock. Sorry to say. Yeah. <gasps> What's that? What is that? It's a St. Bridget's Cross. Oh. And? It's the first one I did. St. Bridget's Day is uh, February 1st. Anyway, right. for all you like. Yeah, they Irish Catholics out there. Yeah, they celebrate that in Ireland, and that looks so familiar from my younger days. It's like it's actually um, like I think the the Celtic name of it is Imbolc is the uh, the festival, yeah. and this is like a very it's actually kind of a pagan symbol that was left over. I think it's big with the the Wiccans and the the neo pagans and stuff like that. But I just thought it was kind of a cool. I saw like a. They had a thing about it, I don't know, on a, a, cult, a cultist video, like how to do it. I'm like, oh, hmm, I've got some grass. Allison uh, Perkins' mother posted it from the, whatever, the Detroit Irish something or other. Irish Detroit, yeah. It was that, how to make one of those, I think. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, it's just sitting here. So I was just like, ooh, I'll share. Very nice. Well, nice to see you, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, sorry that uh, Jim couldn't make it. Maybe he was not amused last week. <laughs> Remember, Jim came last week kind of at the. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, he was here for a while. It was the week before he only came for just a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But... yeah, I don't know. Um, I haven't really. I should reach out, send him an email, see what's going on with him. So are you, you and Eric and Kim going to go on to the, uh, the session out west? I'm not I sure I will. Is, is that on? Is that tonight? Yes. Yeah. It starts at like nine o'clock. I think. So have fun. Bring some uh, tunes back. I don't know. I, I usually just go for a few minutes. I go and listen to the first couple of tunes. I don't really. 
I'm probably like that guy that just kind of shows up and and then kind of like leaves and and everybody goes like, geez, you know, didn't that? how many people, not ahead of how many people show up online? Um, probably like close to twenty, I think. I, I think mean, it's a was, big, yeah. it's a big group. Like you know, plenty of people there. Uh, Pat Wilcox was there. Pat was there. Yeah. What's the level like? um it varies i think yeah there's a big yeah. wide group michael like what like last week was the only time i went i've been i've played you know on sessions like michael askin can play really fast reels you know where it's like oh i know this i know i know the tune but i can't keep up you know i don't know it that well where i can just kind of play it at this pace and then when they open it up to the wider group there's a lot more you're sort of like oh okay you know it's like a, a different thing so different skill levels yeah they make a a list of people uh to play a set and basically the guy controls the the mute buttons and then they just go down the list in the chat and everybody uh plays through three times and then he switches to the next person on the list um which is pretty interesting yeah it's sort of like a, a round robin like you know, was it Ashley that was talking about doing that in Tel Aviv? Yeah, 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 like that. Oh, if anybody goes, have a good time and bring a tune back. Okay. I'll yep. try. <laughs> See ya. See you, Fran. Friend. Friend. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, See you later, friend. Bye. Every, is everybody uh, yeah. signing off? Yeah, I guess. Uh, so. I think we can. Yeah. So. Okay. All good right. You all. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Bye. We'll see you guys later. Yep. Right. Bye bye. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Eric, for hosting. You're welcome, Joe. Yep. Yep. See you guys later. See ya. Bye.